Lincoln has been on quite the product refresh assault over the last 24 months. I'm here in Los Angeles on the eve of the 2019 LA Auto Show, and this is the newest member to their plug-in hybrid family. This is the 2021 Lincoln Corsair Grand Touring. Let's take a first look. Now, as the second member of the plug-in hybrid family member in the Lincoln lineup, the Corsair Grand Touring is going to fill quite an important void within the Lincoln family. And under the hood, you find a similar powertrain that what you get in the 2020 Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. The difference is Lincoln adds a third electric motor to the rear axle to give you all-wheel drive. Now, the company is targeting about 266 horsepower combined with the electric motor and the 2.5-liter four-cylinder naturally aspirated engine. Now, of course, with a plug-in hybrid, the big news is always the range. Now, Lincoln says you've got about a 14 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack and you should get 25 plus miles of range uh, whenever this vehicle does decide to go on sale at the end of 2020. Now when you look at the design of the Grand Touring model you can see it has the classic proportions of Lincoln's as the newer Lincoln products you have the corporate Lincoln grille these full LED headlights I think Lincoln in general has been really killing it in terms of the design it looks nothing like of course the Ford Escape on which this vehicle shares a platform with I see a lot of baby aviator in the design and as you guys know the aviator has been been quite the success, which again, shared a lot of platform or styling details with the flagship vehicle, the Lincoln Navigator. Now being based off of the Escape, you do have a vehicle with a much smaller footprint versus the Aviator. It's about 180.6 inches long, which means it's about a foot shorter than the all new Aviator, which is gonna help people who live in a more urban environment. Of course, with a vehicle like this, you're gonna want it to be smaller. You're gonna wanna have that electrification uh, capability. Now, of course, the plug, the charge port is gonna be over here. Lincoln didn't have the final figures yet for how long it's gonna to take to actually plug in the vehicle when you're looking to recharge it, but they will be introducing new features such as their Copilot 360 Plus, which has the full self-driving capabilities, or at least a hands-free self-driving when it comes to market. Lincoln is also gonna be introducing their they're uh, using your phone as a key system. So just like Tesla, when they introduced that a couple of years ago on the Model 3, you'll be able to just use your smartphone and enter and exit the vehicle uh, with just your smartphone you don't, and there's no need to use a key. Now, if you want to follow me over to the back, let's take a look at some of the styling details or the changes they've made. Now, if you guys like the design of the Corsair, the regular one, this is basically carrying over the same kind of design theme. You have kind of these taillights that connect to each other through the middle of the tailgate. The Lincoln emblem is kind of spelled out. There is no Grand Touring or plug-in hybrid badges, which I actually kind of appreciate because a lot of plug-in hybrids, they try to advertise like crazy that you're driving a green vehicle, whereas this one is a little bit more subtle. It's actually a lot more subtle. You can see, just like the regular model, you have these really tastefully integrated dual outlet exhausts, which are mounted flush underneath the bumper. And this particular one here in this white looks very classy, looks very elegant. Now with cargo capacity, that's always a big consideration with plug-in hybrids. Now, unlike plug-in hybrids, or hybrids of the past, you don't lose any actual cargo space back here. You can see Lincoln has mounted the batteries underneath the rear seats, and the regular Corsair gives you around 30 uh, cubic feet of space. This looks roughly the same. Lincoln didn't have final numbers just yet for this plug-in hybrid model, but it's good to see that the cargo capacity hasn't been compromised because the batteries live underneath the floor. But let's hop into the interior and let's take a look and see uh, what Lincoln has done for the Corsair Grand Touring. Now, moving on to the interior of the 2021 Corsair Grand Tour, you can see Lincoln has really been killing it in terms of their exterior designs, and that really carries over when you look at the inside. They've kind of been fording their own path with American luxury and offering something different. Now, shutting the door, it has a really solid sound. So again, that's adding to the impression of quality. This is their least expensive SUV, but it feels like you're in their bigger, more expensive models. Now this particular one here is basically the top of the stack. It actually even smells expensive in here. So unlike the Ford Escape, which this vehicle shares a platform with, you have an interior that will remind you nothing of the Ford Escape. It has its own unique switch gear, its own unique infotainment system. The materials in here, I mean, you have a soft touch material here. You have this real aluminum trim. You have the real stitching here on the dashboard with some shiny metal trim, some piano black plastic. The seats themselves are heated and cooled. And these are the optional 24-way perfect position seats. Now remember, Lincoln first offered the 30-way perfect position seats back on the Continental a few years ago. These allow you to get all kinds of adjustability to get that perfect driving position or that perfect seat position. So that's something that's really important for luxury car buyers. In terms of the infotainment system here, this eight inch uh, SYNC 3 infotainment system is different versus what you find in something like the Escape. It kind of has its own unique graphics. It does include Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You have a full LCD screen here for the instrument panel, which also looks nice. There's several different drive modes over here. The steering wheel itself, 
There's also power tilt and telescoping. So all the luxury features you really expect in addition to the Copilot 360, you have the phone that you could use as your, uh, your key, so you don't actually have to have to key fob. And then this panoramic sunroof above me lets in a lot of light. It's one of the biggest panoramic sunroofs in the industry. So I am looking forward to getting behind the wheel and driving this thing. I really like what Lincoln has done for the interior, but let's hop into the back seat because I wanna see how the legroom space compares to some of the competitors. Now hopping into the back seat of the Corsair, you can see just like the Escape, there is actually a good amount of space back here. Now I couldn't find the actual legroom specs for the Grand Touring model just yet, but I am happy to see that the floor is almost completely flat, which is nice because there are batteries supposedly either under the floor, under this back seat. You have rear seat vents over here, you have two map pockets, and then there's also an armrest that folds down. The one thing I am noticing this one's missing, no heated rear seats, which I kind of expected at this price point, but you do have a power outlet here and a 120 household power plug. So the 2021 Corsair Grand Touring will be joining the Lincoln lineup in the summer of 2020. And Lincoln didn't have full pricing for this vehicle just yet, but they are targeting a starting price of around $50,000. Now remember, the regular Corsair starts around $36,000. So for all the tech for that plug-in hybrid with up to 25 plus miles of range, it should be a good starting price. Now keep in mind in this segment, there are competitors like the Volvo XC60 T8, which offers 400 horsepower, but only time will tell if the all new Corsair Grand Touring will be a competitive entry in this growing segment of plug-in hybrid luxury SUVs. For Redline Reviews here on the eve of the 2019 LA Auto Show, I'm Sofian Bey.